Hi, welcome back. We've spent a lot of time looking at the theory behind x-rays. Now let's actually go into an x-ray room and look at the equipment. We will start with an x-ray table where the patient is lying on a movable floating top table with the x-ray tube above and the detector system cassette in the bed under the patient. The unit containing the x-ray tube could be moved to give the correct positioning over the bed. Modern systems are very flexible and this one can be moved to the end of the bed for imaging a wrist with the patient sitting on a chair. Under the bed is the detector system. This can be either photographic film or a digital detector as is used in this particular system. The bed also contains the Bucky grid. If you remember, a grid is used to reduce the scatter x-rays. It needs to be moving slightly backwards and forwards during the x-ray exposure. Otherwise, there will be lines from the grid on the image. The next item to consider is the x-ray tube. It is contained within this unit. If you remember back to the lesson on x-ray tubes, we learnt that they produce a lot of heat. So there is a cooling system, which is the purpose of these hoses. Below the x-ray tube, but still within this unit, is the light beam diaphragm, the LBD, which is used for collimation. Let us now look at how the radiographer will use the light beam diaphragm to collimate or restrict the x-ray beam to the desired region. In this case, a lumbar spine x-ray. A light in the unit simulates where the x-ray beam will fall and the radiographer will feel for anatomical landmarks to centre the patient to the correct position. The light beam diaphragm is then adjusted to a narrow section extending from the ribs to the pelvis. A laser is used to ensure that the centre of the desired field of view is exactly aligned with the centre of the detector system. The radiographer can then retreat behind an x-ray shield containing lead to operate the x-ray exposure. In most cases, it takes less than a second for each exposure. 